to take a closer look at what makes Kepelin a cinder cone. Now, Kepelin, uh, as I said earlier, is made up of fragmented chunks of magma that, because of that high volatile content or that high gas content in the magma that produced the volcano, have been blown into pieces and accumulated into a cone. Now, let's start down below the volcano before it even uh, starts erupting in order to get a better idea of what's going on here. Magma consists of molten rock, or completely melted rock, as well as dissolved gases like water and carbon dioxide, among others. And those gases <clears throat> are um, under a lot of pressure in those magma chambers deep below the earth. Now, if a uh, fault or a fissure or some other route to the surface becomes available to this magma chamber, it will, due to the forces of buoyancy, rise to the surface. Now, as it rises, these gases are no longer under as much pressure in the magma chamber, and so they start to expand. And as they get very near the surface, they expand to the point where they're almost like bubbles waiting to burst. And when they burst at the surface, they break apart the molten rock that's around them and send those chunks of molten rock flying into the immediate area around the vent or the place where the magma is coming out of the ground. Now, if you have a high volatile content in a particular pulse of magma, um, it will be able to uh, fragment the magma into a lot of tiny pieces. If you have only a little bit of, of volatiles in your magma, it might be able to only blow the magma into larger chunks. And that's why you see different sizes here in these cinders. Some of them are very small, they're about the size of peas, and others, like this one here, that, and up there, are very large. And so that shows you that as this volcano was building over time, you had different pulses with different quantities of dissolved gases um, <clears throat> uh, in the magma contributing to the building of this cone. Now, as I said before, when this magma is exploding out of the vent uh, and these pieces are fragmenting, the rock is still melted. As they fly through the air, that air does cool them down significantly and they start solidifying into rock. But as they hit the ground, <clears throat> they may be completely cooled already, or they may still be a little bit molten. And so, as rock upon rock, or um, molten magma glob against molten magma glob, um, uh, hit against each other, they, they may actually weld together. Um, welding, of course, uh, being very similar to the metal process of, of uh, fusing two metals together while they're warm. Similarly, molten rock flies out of a, a cinder cone and melts to the existing molten rock there. Um, and that gives the cinder cone its, uh, its structure, its ability to, to form a very steep-sided um, cone as opposed to simply flowing out over the ground. It's these welded bits of cinders. Now you can see that there are different layers here. As I said, the magma comes out in pulses. A cinder cone is a kind of volcano that only erupts once, but it can erupt over several hours, or several days, several years, even several decades. And so you won't necessarily see a continuous stream of cinders coming out of one of these, but, but pulses of cinders over time accumulating into different layers, um, distinguished by different sizes in the cinders, um, and, and overall building this, this structure that we call a cinder cone here at Kapolin Volcano.